there. Today I'd like to show you a, a few of my interesting items here. Some older transistor radios. One radio in particular that I'd like to show you on this video is a two transistor regenerative receiver. Some of you people out there may remember those. You used to get some pretty good money for them back in those days. For only a two transistor regenerative pocket radio that ran on a 9 volt battery but you have to put it up to your ear even though it had a speaker in it. It was so insensitive that it really wasn't worth having at all to tell you the truth but it was interesting. I bought this radio 1959 I believe and it had a good sized speaker in it with a heavy magnet and everything which I'll show you and also some other transistor items here that are quite interesting. Alright this is the two transistor regenerative receiver now when I got it there was a insignia of some sort here that had fallen off years ago so we don't even know what brand there it is but there is a schematic on the back cover which I will show you right now it just tells you a model this is the circuit now when was the last time you saw a transistor radio with a circuit diagram on the back cover but you can see it only has two transistors yep one here and one here very very simple little circuit now here's the radio itself back in those days you had a tuning capacitor look how heavy that thing is look at how heavy the magnet is on the speaker considering that it's only two transistors and I believe there's one here and the other one's over here so there isn't much to it at all but likewise there isn't much in the way of performance either I got it all the way out. I don't know if you can hear that. That speaker right up to the microphone here. I rocked the dial a little bit. There's only one station. And I'm holding my finger on the antenna to try to get a little more out of it. I'll tell you. Not much of a radio, is it? But I'll tell you what, back in those days, it was quite thrilling to have a pocket radio that worked. Hey, I got a transistor radio I can carry in my pocket. Ain't playing music along the way. Anyways, not much of a performer, but a big deal back in the late 1950s. In the early 1960s, I acquired this one and um, I started working in a, uh, a nursery to pot plants and so forth when I was out on the fields you know uh, picking weeds and stuff I used to take this um, radio with me take it out of the case here it's seen its time it's taped up and everything else here but you know what she still works I just stuck a battery in it it's not a, a fresh battery but it reads pretty good Not really good. They had a headphone jack, but uh, I took it out a long time ago because it kept giving me trouble. I never bothered with it. I just. Wake up, are you 
you know, left it that way. Of course, that's a that was a Pacific six transistor radio. I've had quite a few transistor radios in the early '60s, but a sense of uh, been long gone. Now here is an interesting thing that I never could fix. It's too too small. A Casio TV 21, and I can't even demonstrate this for you because the battery compartment is all corroded and everything's falling apart in it. So I can't do much to show you that other than just show what what it looks like. It did work, but then the, the ribbon cable became, uh, you know, it stopped working and I didn't get any more video out of it. What it did is it took the existing light and reflected it off here on the mirror and uh, you was able to see a picture here, but it was very faint and it used the headphones as an antenna. So you plugged your headphone in here, did not have a speaker, and um, you adjusted your UHF and VHF here and like I say if that battery compartment wasn't bad you'd hear the sound on the headphones but you couldn't get a, any video out of it. I really should maybe dump it on eBay maybe somebody that's got real real good eyesight and a microscope could work on something like this. I keep it as a novelty. Got I think one of the best televisions that they ever made. I got this on eBay a few years back and um, It is sensitive as heck. Help the ailing housing market get moving again. Keep in mind, the loan limit increase is a temporary one. It ends Maybe I can tune it here and find the tuning. Joining us to offer his expertise. All right, I'm up in the shop with this, of course, and you know, I'm getting UHF on it. I do got some VHF, but it does better on the UHF right now, up in my area, anyhow. This is going to matter after uh, February of 2009 because uh, then what's going to happen with these things? Well, I guess we have to take the batteries out, stick them on the shelf, and uh, just look at them as far as uh, actually looking at them, not watching them anymore. Unless we want to put a signal in from, by way of a transmitter. But it's interesting. Nice little set. I've got this little Panasonic that I paid a dollar for at a yard sale and um, it's got weak vertical. I won't even attempt to try to repair this because I can't work on this small stuff. And it's got the magnifier on it. I'll take the magnifier off and show you. It's a cute little TV. It's similar to one I bought many years ago but sold it. Um, and they're like a, a couple hundred bucks at that time. But I just figured for the heck of it. But I can't do much with the video, the vertical. The vertical is rolling. As a matter of fact, the whole sink is uh, very weak. When it comes to transistor stuff, I'll tell you what, I, it's just too small, especially stuff like this. You have to uh, you have to be young, have super good eyesight, and I think you have to use a microscope to work on them. But anyways, uh, it's a cute little set. And um, what the heck, for a buck at a yard sale, can't complain. I'm a glutton for collecting junk anyhow.